We are here at the Jaguar Rescue Center with Incar, and she is going to tell us a little bit about what they do here and how people can help. Well, uh, my first objective always is uh, try to save the life when the animals arrive. Not always is possible, like Angelina. Angelina is here because the mommy died in the electricity, and uh, she arrives here uh, uh, two months ago, very, very bad, with a lot of injuries in, in uh, her fingers. Our very important objective is try to put them into the wild. Release into the wild is very important for us, very, very important. Sometimes it's a risk, but I prefer to risk a little bit that have a lot of animals inside a cage. No? And then, of course, the education is like our obsession because here in this local place there are a lot, a lot of superstitions and fables and fantasies about the animals, and we try to to change a little, bit, uh, a little bit the mind of the people. Can you tell me how people can help? I would like to do a lot, a lot of uh, things for the animals and for the nature in this uh, wonderful country. And I would like to investigate more about the diseases and parasites and uh, uh, medicaments. Uh, and we need, of course, money for do that. The second part of our project is uh, we release uh, all the animals in our land. Mm -hmm. and now we have 50 hectares of primary forest. Never touch for human is so wonderful, but we need uh, we need more. And if someone wants to to buy with us, will be very nice. For example, there are people from United States that help us with the milk, special milk that I need from the uh, for the sloths, and and it's only from United States. No? Can you tell us just real quick a little bit about some of the animals that we're going to see today? What kind of animals are here? We have uh, all the poisonous snakes of Costa Rica. Our collection of snakes is one of the, the most important here. We have a lot of uh, snakes and all the poisonous, mostly. And it's very important because the people can arrive here and recognize the different species because one of the problems is they confuse all and they kill all. No? And then we have, uh, of course, our howler monkeys like Angelina. We have five females of howler monkeys, all without the mummy, and two because it was a pet, the other confiscated for the police, well, different problems. Then we have sloths, two fingers and three fingers, the two different species of sloths. We have uh, wildcats, one margay, now just one, and two jawarundi, there are different uh, species of wildcats in Costa Rica. One toucan, one baby toucan that is here because three dogs was uh, playing with him and now it's okay, but can fly because he's a baby. Do you ever need volunteers here? Yeah, we have volunteers, but I need volunteers for a long time, not just for two weeks or one month. I prefer more than three months. We are going to talk a little bit about the sloths, as you can see right here. Well, here we have the three toes sloth. In Costa Rica, there are two different species. The three toes, like she, she's Warumita, and the two toes sloth. And both are very, very different. For example, the big difference for me is, uh, of course, the, the face is very, very different. The hair is different. But the three toes sloth, they have a little tail, and the sexual organs are inside. And uh, it's uh, very difficult to recognize if it's a male or female first that uh, a year, no? Then if it's a male, the male have here on back like a patch orange and, um, and black. And it's very easy to recognize on top into the tree. But the two toes, no, because the sexual organs are external, normally without the tail. But on top into the tree, it's not easy to recognize them, no? And then the behavior is very different. For example, this one, it's only leaves, mostly warumo leaves, one kind of a tree. The two toes, it's uh, different, <laughs> different uh, leaves, fruits, and, and some insects, and perhaps eggs in the nature too. And, and well, the two toes is, um, is faster than this one. It's a more defensive animal if you, want to touch a wild two toes of sloth could bite you. This one never. This one is very peaceful animal and never bite. Are sloths endangered here in Costa Rica? Well, if you see a books uh, about the sloths, there are a lot of studies. 
and um, I'm sure that probably are endangered, but um, ellos dicen vulnerable. Vulnerable is near to endangered or probably endangered, but the problem is about the neotropical fauna, about the neotropical animals. There are a lot of studies because uh, the, the animals live inside the jungle and it's not easy to study these kind of animals. How no? long is this? This one is three years and a half and uh, she arrives here three years and a half ago because uh, was without the mummy and someone found her abandoned and and crying in the middle of the street and and Warumita is here because it's very very difficult to uh, release the sloths into the wild because it needs a mummy for a long time for to learn all about the nature what kind uh, of leaves is necessary to eat and uh, and then uh, they, they could leave uh, poison poison leaves and, and, and can die no? so she'll stay here with you well now, the problem with Goromita now, the sexual age is coming and something is changing because for three years Goromita was only interest uh, to stay in my home, in my living room, in my sofa, in the hamaca and here in these uh, little trees but always come back. But now she has interest for to explore more the jungle and, and, and she was the first hit some month ago. And, and the males come here and, and we try one day because here for me the animals decide when I'm ready for to go. No? We are in here with the Tyler monkeys and we're going to learn a little bit about them today. Well, the howler monkeys, uh, they have a social structure in the nature. It's a one male, one boss male with a, a lot of females. It's harem structure. And <laughs> the howler monkey is um, one of the three different species that lives here in, in, in the Caribbean size. Here we have a spider monkey, howler monkey, and uh, cappuccino, Cebus cappuccino. And the howler monkey is, uh, for me, is uh, the most peaceful animal. Is uh, because uh, they prefer to to laugh, to to howl, that uh, fight, no. And it's very very nice uh, to hear in the morning and in the afternoon the male, the boss, in the group. This uh, this uh, terrible sound, no. Very very special, but it's very very nice to hear each day the howlers near to your home. And today we're here with Mr. Uh, How or Mrs. Howler. Well, and the babies need uh, 18 months of milk of the mommy, it's a long time, and then if it's a female, sure, two years and a half with the mommy. <laughs> Two years and a half with the mom, you know? Ah, yeah, we can your earrings. It's <laughs> terrible. It's okay. <laughs> and your glasses probably. <laughs> and well, uh, our howler monkeys arise for different reasons. <laughs> this one is the most terrible. She's Kuka. Kuka now is 11 months old and it's here because Kuka fall down the tree. And I'm sure the mommy doesn't have enough milk because Kuka was with um, well with the bad teeth typical for a bad growth <laughs> <laughs> and with a big infection in the ba on on belly now the milk that you talked about is it is it for the the babies these babies yeah i use uh, milk in formula for like human babies they need the same and uh, this one was my first monkey she's minimo 